our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Acesse suprememastertv.com barra schedule. Hamare karyakram pesh kiye jate hain kai bhashaon mein. Kripya dekhe suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Наши программы предлагают много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com Нашите предавания предлагат много езици. Моля вижте suprememastertv.com на клона на черта schedule. Now, this is a part where I told you that Buddha was a Vedic, okay? He said, Bikyus, means monks, monks and nuns. Bikyus who do not wear silk, not even wear silk, or leather boots. At that time, the Buddha already so clear. The Bikyus who do not wear silk, or leather boots, or furs or down from this country, or consume milk, cream, or butter, can truly transcend this world. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Olaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Chào quý khán giả nổi bật, tôi tên là Trang Quỳnh, từ Âu Lạc Trang Hòa Yêu Thương, còn được biết là Việt Nam. Chúng tôi khiêm cung mong đợi học hỏi thêm về văn hóa của quý vị, và chào mừng quý vị đến quê hương thân thương của chúng tôi. Bà Na là một người anh em trong cộng đồng 54 dân tộc của đất nước Âu Lạc, Việt Nam. Họ thường cư trú ở vùng rừng núi cao và sống theo từng làng với luật lệ riêng. Luật pháp của làng mang tính chất răng dạy nhưng luôn lấy sự khoan dung, hòa giải làm trọng. Người Ba Na sinh sống chủ yếu dựa vào nghề làm vườn, trồng lúa. Phụ nữ Pana nổi tiếng với kỹ thuật dệt thổ cẩm rất tinh tế, làm ra những sản phẩm không chỉ đẹp về hình thức mà còn ẩn chứa sắc thái văn hóa, thể hiện một tâm hồn phong phú, phóng khoáng. Đặc biệt, kho tàng sử thi của dân tộc Ba Na đã được Bộ Văn hóa công nhận là di sản văn hóa phi vật thể cấp quốc gia. Trong số đó, đồ sộ nhất là sử thi Đâm Dông. Nhìn vào sử thi của Ba Na, người ta không chỉ thấy lịch sử của một dân tộc dũng cảm, mà còn nhận ra tính chất hiền lành, còn cù và yêu quê hương của người Ba Na qua bao thế hệ. Chúng tôi vui mừng chia sẻ đôi nét về vùng Tây Nguyên trang nhã của Âu Lạc, 
Việt Nam cùng quý khán giả khai ngộ. Kính chúc quý vị những ngày vô cùng viên mãn và trọn niềm vui phía trước. Trong hơn ba thập niên, Ngài Thánh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã so sáng thế giới bằng giáo lý thiên liên. Là một vị minh sư toàn giác, Ngài truyền đạt pháp môn quán âm cho những ai khao khát tức khắc tìm lại thượng đế tánh bên trong, hầu đạt được giải thoát vĩnh hằng trong kiếp này khỏi vòng sinh tử luân hồi. Pháp môn quán âm đã được tu tập bởi tất cả các vị minh sư như Đức Phật, Khổng Tử, Guru Nanak, Chúa Giêsu Kitô, Lão Tử, Thần Krishna, Thần Mahavira, Nhà Tiên Tri Mohammed, Hòa Bình đến với Ngài và nhiều vị khác. Ngài đã nhấn mạnh nếu chúng ta luôn tưởng nhớ Thượng Đế, phục vụ tha nhân một cách vô ngã và tuân theo luật vũ trụ, chúng ta sẽ đạt được tiềm năng tối thượng của con người và thật sự hiểu được mục đích của mình trên địa cầu này. Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư là một tấm gương sống phi thường về lòng từ bi. Ngài thường xuyên cứu trợ bằng hiện vật và tài chính, đồng thời gửi gắm tình thương cho những người tị nạn, vô gia cư, nạn nhân thiên tai và những người cần được trợ giúp khác. Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư xin sâu sắc tri ân Thượng Đế tự ái vì sự trợ giúp tài chính, tiện nghi và sự hỗ trợ cho những mảnh đời bất hạnh, thiếu thốn và hoặc cho tất cả các nghĩa cử cao đẹp đã được thực hiện trong những năm qua như một công cụ khiêm nhường chuyên chở lòng từ bi và tình thương của thượng đế đến những người con quý giá của ngài ngài thanh hải vô thượng sư đã nhận rất nhiều tình thương và sự trợ giúp từ các tổ chức giới truyền thông chính phủ và các cá nhân cũng như nhiều giải thưởng như giải gu si hòa bình năm 2006 được xem như giải Nobel Hòa Bình của phương Đông. Giải lãnh đạo tâm linh thế giới năm 1994, giải Mahavir năm 2008, cả hai ngày 22 tháng 2 và 25 tháng 10 được tuyên bố là ngày Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư, một công dân danh dự của Hiệp Chủng Quốc Hoa Kỳ, vân vân Và qua nhiều năm, Ngài đã được vinh danh với rất nhiều giải thưởng khác cùng những lời ngợi ca về hoạt động nhân đạo và thiện nguyện cao thượng của Ngài.
xin thứ lỗi cho chúng tôi vì đã không thể kể hết nhiều giải thưởng và các vinh danh khác do giới hạn về thời gian và không gian. Là tiếng nói chân thành cho các bạn thú xinh đẹp, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư khuyến khích lối dinh dưỡng thuần thực vật, hòa bình và bác ái. Và những viễn cảnh tươi sáng với sự thức tỉnh của nhân loại về sự thiên liêng của muôn loài. Một thế giới thuần chay bình yên và huy hoàng nơi các bạn thú và con người sống trong hạnh phúc hòa hợp. Những sáng kiến của Ngài nhằm phổ biến xu hướng thuần chay rất đa dạng, bao gồm phương pháp tờ thông tin lối sống mới, chủ nhà hàng thuần chay quốc tế Loving Heart, các công ty thực phẩm thuần chay, các sản phẩm lông thuần chay, truyền hình vô thượng sư cũng như việc trao đổi thường xuyên với quan chức chính phủ có tầm ảnh hưởng và các nhà lãnh đạo giới truyền thông, cũng như tham gia các buổi hội thảo truyền hình về biến đổi khí hậu, vân vân. Dù chúng ta có nhận biết hay không, những nỗ lực của Ngài đã mang lại ảnh hưởng to lớn tới nhận thức toàn cầu về lối sống thân thiện với các bạn thú và làm sao lối sống từ ái này có thể mang đến hòa bình trường tồn giữa các quốc gia, đồng thời cứu địa cầu khỏi nạn biến đổi khí hậu và thiên tai. Qua nhiều năm, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã du hành khắp thế giới, từ châu Mỹ đến châu Phi, từ châu Âu đến châu Đại Dương và đã tổ chức hàng trăm buổi thuyết giảng trước công chúng cùng các đệ tử về nhiều chủ đề tâm linh. Hôm nay, chúng tôi hân hạnh được trình chiếu một trong những bài thuyết giảng sâu sắc với tự đề Kinh Lăng Nghiêm, bốn lời minh hướng về tánh thanh tịnh, đoạn tâm tham dục và sát sinh, phần 6 của 6 phần trong tiết mục giữa thầy và trò, được giảng bằng tiếng Anh vào ngày 22 tháng 12 năm 2018. Ananda, the Buddha continues to talk to Ananda. Ananda, I permitted the Bishu in the monks in the earlier days to eat five kinds of pure meat. This meat is actually a transformation brought into being by my spiritual power. I mean, the Buddha manifested it, used his power to make the meat for these Bishu because they probably live in an area where the vegetable doesn't grow or they are not used to it, or maybe they're sick or something, or nobody give them the vegetarian food, something like that. So the Buddha manifested some so-called meat to give to this uh, bhikkhu, the monks, yeah? So it basically has no life force, fat meat, yeah? And nowadays they're also trying to make that. <laughs> you Brahmins live in a climate so hot and humid, and on such sandy and rocky land that vegetables will not grow. I was right. The vegetable cannot grow there. So the Buddha manifests it for his disciples, monks who eat. Mm. Therefore, I have had to assist you with spiritual powers and compassion because of the magnitude of this kindness and compassion. What you eat that tastes like meat is merely said to be meat. In fact, however, it is not meat. See that? Oh. Same in the Bible. God has also manifested manna. Yeah? Probably God at the time was manifested in a physical form as a master. In the Bible, God manifests manna for them to eat. And then one time, uh, God so called his disciple or believer of God also asked him, God mockingly. In the old time, it say that you manifest the manna to our ancestors to eat. Why don't you manifest meat for us? Yeah, and God did manifest meat. 
rain down meat for them to eat. And after that, it destroyed them all. So in the Bible also say, meat for the belly, belly for the meat, but God shall destroy both meat and them. So both of this uh, um, religion that I'm, I am acquainted with, say to say to you, more or less. Except that the Buddha lived a very long life. He, he preached over 80 years, so he can tell many things that he knows. And even then he said, what I told you, he said to his disciple, what I, I told you is just uh, 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 some leaves in my hand compared to the forest. Yeah, of course, so many things he cannot explain in human's language. I cannot show them in the mundane vision. How can the Buddha say everything? I said, you yourself become Buddha and experience it yourself. Okay? So he said, what I told you is just a handful of leaves compared to the forest leaves. Whoa, imagine how little it is, yeah? And then we have so many sutras already. This is just one of them. It's just one of them, and so big like that. And what I tell you now, it's just a portion of it, a small portion. Understand? I select what's good for you only, not too many things, okay? All right, but if I have time, maybe i check out more, whatever. Maybe good for you, okay? Or maybe the other sutra, like Lotus Sutra. Other sutra also very, very good. All the Buddhist sutra are very good. So he said, it tastes like meat because of I manifest it, but it's not real meat. It has no life force, no killing. Just so nowadays, like we eat uh, vegetarian meat, vegan meat, huh? it tastes very good. The texture and all that looks like maybe similar to hamburger, but it's not. There's no killing in it, no life force in it. Even the Buddha manifests, there's no life force of even vegetable. After my extinction, after Buddha's nirvana, me, me, after he passed from this world, after my nirvana or extinction, how can those who eat the flesh of living beings be called the disciples of Shakyamuni Buddha? He asked, you know, he said, how can anybody? After he died already, nobody manifests the fake meat for them. So if anybody eat meat, they are not disciples of the Buddha. I told you before in some of my lectures that Buddha said that. It is here, okay? If you don't believe me, you go home and get the Surangama Sutra, page 163. You read it. So this is true, huh? What I said before that the Buddha said this, said that, is true also. You should know, the Buddha continued, you should know that these people who eat meat may still gain some awareness and may seem to be in samadhi even. But they are all great rasaksa, lower groups. Not even, uh, you know, diva in the, in the heaven, not even diva in the in lower kingdom, not even asura, it's a rasaksa, you know, low ghost. It's a magical power of me. When their retribution ends, they are bound to sink into the bitter sea of birth and death again. They are not disciples of the Buddha. Such people as these kill and eat one another in a never-ending cycle. How can such people transcend the triple rims? The triple rim is the asura and the second world and the third world even. You know, after you you transcend the third, the three worlds, then you can be forever liberated. The four levels, okay? Or you can say that they cannot transcend the three uh, existence, like the hungry ghost and the hell and the uh, vicious animals birth. Not all animal births are from the common, okay? But some are. Whew. Mm, okay, I am almost there. <laughs> oh, for so many. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. <laughs> I thought I can end the day with the too. And that's not included my calendar talk. <laughs> I don't know if you can sleep tonight. 
if we don't cut it off now. <laughs> All right. Okay, tell me when you had it, then we'll go sleep, okay? Then uh, we can talk again tomorrow. We have seven days, right? <laughs> Now, what is it? You like me talk or you don't like me talk? Yes or no? Yes, don't like? Yes, right. Okay, I know. Just joking. I know what you like. Yes. Best is that CPA 24 7. Talk whatever, right? Talk Peace in Korea, whatever. You like it all. Okay, Buddha continues. When he said to Ananda, because Ananda said he wanted to save sentient beings, remember? Yeah. And he asked the Buddha, how can we do that? Yeah. So now the Buddha concluded, more or less, not they concluded, but I it concluded when I concluded. It's not yet. <laughs> Therefore, Ananda, if when you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must also cut off killing the people, not just the monks and nuns, yeah? So they, the people in the world, must also cut off killing. This is the second clear and unalterable instruction on purity given by the first come ones and the Buddhas of the past, the world honor ones of the past. Meaning all the Buddha, all the same, teach this way to all people. Yeah, either now or the past. That's what the Buddha said. So the Buddha said, therefore, Ananda, if cultivators of Chan Samadhi, mean the meditation, the way you do, do not cut off killing, they are the one who stops up his ears and calls out in a loud voice, expecting no one to hear him. It's like he stuffed his ear, <laughs> but he talked very loud and yell loud and then thinking nobody hears him because he himself doesn't? Yeah. Well, you know everything, my God. <laughs> what for I'm talking, huh? You come up here. <laughs> All right. Very good. Because when you stuff your ears, yeah, and you don't hear even if you talk loud, okay, or anybody talk loud. But you stuff your ear and then you talk loud and then you think nobody hears, you won't disturb anybody anyway. And that is not correct. That's not logical. That's what the Buddha meant. Just an example to make it more clear explanation to Ananda. The Buddha is very patient, don't you think? Yeah. 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 He keeps saying this, saying that, exhausting all kind of explanation, taking his time so that his disciple understands, understand well, you know, and not just understand but understand well. Because the example is more clear, yeah, than just talk. Because he stuffed his ear and expected no one to hear him. It is to wish to hide what is completely evident. <laughs> Say, it is very illogical that you eat meat and you will become Buddha. How can you kill someone and live? I mean, eternally. That's what Buddha means. It's not reasonable, not logical. So, bodhisattvas and bhikkhus, mean monks, who practice purity will not even step on grass in a pathway. Even less will they pull it up with their hand. How can one with great compassion pick up the flesh and blood of living, moving beings and proceed to eat it to his skill? <sighs> the monks in the Hinayana Buddhist country, such as you know, some of the Asian countries, they are in a Hinayana a way of Buddhist life, of Buddhist monk. You wouldn't think that they eat a lot of meat, but it's not like that. Except the monks and, uh, who have many uh, followers, and may, maybe they bring meat to the temple and offer it to the, the monks. Otherwise, they go out every day, once a day, in the morning, just to go for arm, and the people give them whatever they eat, okay? 
I saw that it's not much meat though. I don't see meat at all. I just see some rice and vegetables. And to be a monk like that, eat once a day and go out bake for food and eat whatever people give is not a very comfortable life, physically speaking, okay? So it's, it's a very hard practice, very high discipline. I saw them using their hand, like the people who offer food, they don't just use spoon, you know? Outside, when these monks from other Asian countries come out to beg for food, people just use their hand and take some uh, a pinch of rice and put it in the bowl before they go in the right, uh, a whole uh, line of, of monks, yeah? And mostly I see young monks, you know, children monks come out. And they use their hand, uh, God knows if they wash them or not. They use their hand to pick the rice from their pot and give one pinch to each monk. And to the next one, the other would give some vegetables. And I don't know how much they get in a bowl from that. But it's not seemed to be a lot. So if you think to be a monk is an easy job, a lazy job, uh, just uh, don't want to work and go out back for good. It's not true, okay? Even the Hinayana monks, they don't just uh, have a good life like that, the way you think, okay? Come out and beg for food and people just use a hand with the chicken and give it to the like Some use spoon, but not all. I saw. It is uh, required strength, discipline, and strong faith. May the Buddha's blessing as well. Because these uh, Asian countries, they, they follow strictly the Buddha's way. And when Buddha was alive, they go out for all, okay? They don't do business, they don't cook for themselves, they don't demand things, they go out for food. People give them what they give, and they eat what they eat, together. And they don't wear shoes also. They just have uh, two pair of uh, monk rope men and maybe a blanket, but nothing more. Can you live like that? No. No, honestly not. For me, maybe not. Uh, the question of hygiene is already to begin <laughs> to start my problem. But maybe if I have to, maybe I can. Well, I'm not sure about that. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> Sometimes I go out to buy something to eat. Like I say, I want this bread, I want this bread. And if the vendor use her hand, you know, to pick out the bread, I said, no, no, I don't want that one. I want this one. I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes if she use uh, the same knife that she cut the meat, and she cut my other thing, I said, no, 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 oh, so sorry, no, no, I, I changed my mind, I, 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 I go buy something else. Yeah. So I don't know if I go out, I can beg, and people just put anything in my bowl like that, and I don't know if I can eat without vomiting. All right, so you know my weakness now. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem when you talk a lot. <laughs> You, you will talk about yourself also without you, before you even know it. <laughs> and all your weakness come out, yeah? <laughs> all right. Have a laugh. Have a laugh at my expense. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> now, this is a part where I told you that Buddha was a vegan, okay? He said, Bhikkhus, I mean monks, monks and nuns, Bhikkhus who do not wear silk, not even wear silk, or leather boots. At that time, the Buddha already so clear. The big shoe who do not wear silk, or leather boots, or fur, or down from this country, or consume milk, cream, or butter, can truly transcend this world. Hear that? That's the talk of the Buddha. He doesn't even drink milk. He don't wear silk. Some monks are offered silk rope because silk can repel insects and uh, give you comfortable feeling summer or winter. Yeah. But it's made by dead silk worm. Understand? They put the silk worm in the boiling water alive and get the cocoon after that. Well, if you know all these kind of things, you don't want to wear anything. 
Ah, do wear something. <laughs> what I need is those luxury stuff, you know, fur and all that. You see, they cut the seal to death, the baby seal to death, bleeding, and then get their fur. What for? You can wear anything else and keep warm, huh? And pretty. All right, now. Do you see that? So the Buddha say, if the monks who don't wear silk, who don't wear leather boots even, even the leather boots are not, you know, much of the cruelty. Yeah, it is. But they already kill the cows or the animals to eat flesh. And the leftover they use, like a leftover, the discarded part, like the skin they don't eat, yeah? They use it to make boots. But even then, the Buddha said, don't wear it. Not to talk about killing and eat it. Yeah? Eat the animal, alive or dead. So, do not wear silk, the big shoes. He told me that this is all the, uh, the monk that he was talking to. Yeah? But even then, even a, a monk who already renounced all the comfort in the world, family, wife, kids, money, fame, profit, renounce it all already, yeah? Already have a lot of merit, virtues, and already gained a good teaching with the Buddha, staying with the living Buddha every day. Still he tell you, don't eat meat, don't wear silk even, don't wear leather boots, don't wear down, you know, from the pluck, the feather from the birds, don't wear down from this country, don't consume milk, uh, don't consume cream, they made for milk, and butter. Then you can truly transcend this world. You see? You see what I'm saying? Yeah? Not that I say, the Buddha said it. Here, I mark it with the star. Yeah. I read it long ago, I marked it. I thought maybe one day I'd tell you. But I thought you knew already. But then I said, why? Why not? Just reconfirm it with the authority figure. Maybe you believe it more. Oh, at least some people outside, you know, when they watch my lecture, maybe they can believe more. And leave the animals in peace. So, the Buddha continued. When they have paid back their past debt, they will not have to re-enter the triple ring ever again. If you don't wear silk, if you don't drink milk, if you don't take cream, if you don't wear down, if you don't uh, take butter, leather boots, then you never have to enter the circle of life and death again. Okay, now, why, the Buddha asked, why? It is because when one wears something taken from a living creature, one creates conditions with it. Just as when people eat the hundred grains, their feet cannot leave the earth, cannot leave the ground, yeah? Both physically and mentally, one must avoid the bodies and the byproducts of living beings. By neither wearing them or eating them, I say that such people have true liberation. Bravo, Buddha. Thank you very much. One minute to midnight. <laughs> the Buddha said, What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. He doesn't mean only his teaching, but he means the saints' teaching, the holy people's teaching, past and present, for him. So when he said Buddha's teaching, he means general here, uh, uh, a third party. He doesn't mean himself. Yeah. So what I have said here is the, the Buddha's teaching. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of papaya, I mean the heretic, the non-believer, the evil. Okay, there are some more, okay? We continue next time, yeah? Okay. So that you can go rest, okay? Let me explain more about the precepts. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record what the Buddha is teaching after 
the masters in Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddha. Thank you. thương mến, xin cảm ơn quý vị cùng xem chương trình hôm nay. Tựa đề Kinh Lăng Nghiêm, bốn lời minh huấn về tánh thanh tịnh, đoạn tâm tham dục và sát sinh, phần 6 của 6 phần trong tiết mục Giữa thầy và trò. Tiếp theo là Tâm xả bỏ, trích sách triết lý của các vị minh sư. Gurma Sitten của San Kirpal Singh Chi Maharaj, phần 2 của hai phần trong tiết mục lời thánh khải ngay sau tin đáng chú ý xin vui lòng giữ đài truyền hình vua thượng sư để xem thêm nhiều chương trình khẳng định nguyện cầu thánh ái tiếp tục đơm hoa kết trái trong trái tim thiện lành của quý vị cherished viewers we appreciated your company for today's episode entitled the surangama sutra The four clear and unalterable instructions on purity, refrain from lust and killing, part 6 of 6 on between master and disciples. Coming up next is Detachment from Philosophy of the Masters, Guru Masitant, by Sant Kiripal Singh Chi Maharaj, part 2 of 2 on words of wisdom. Right after noteworthy news, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May divine love continue to blossom in your beautiful hearts. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash bmd.